G'day everyone, I wanted to talk to you about a really interesting rumour, well it may not even be a rumour, but I noticed on Sony Alpha rumours this morning that they said that there's wild rumours that Samsung might battle Sony with a new APS-C and full frame sensors. Now I have heard this from multiple sources, they're basically saying that the Fuji X-T3 is using this Sony sensor and there's also rumours that they're going to tee up with Pentax and I've also heard that it could be the new sensor in the um, Panasonic uh, full frame camera that's going to be announced shortly. Now, the interesting thing is, and I'm not sure if you're aware about how good the early uh, Samsung sensors actually were. If we go back to here, this is really interesting because I found in DP Review, they had this article talking about the uh, Samsung NX1 is impressive three years after its release. Now, this was the camera that Samsung actually released and I think it got basically shafted in the end due to its lack of lens support. But it was an incredibly advanced camera uh, for its time. And if you look down, I'm not gonna go right through this because I'll put this in the description below so you can have a full read about how this camera was really that advanced to go. But when you think that this camera was released three years ago, and let's look at what they're actually saying about this. Now they're saying when it was first released that it, it didn't work very well, but over the coming months, Samsung released multiple firmware updates which in, in, um, improved the camera drastically. Um, and if you're looking down here, let's look at some of the things that this actually had uh, at the time. It actually won the 2015 DP Review Innovation Award, so you can see how much advanced it was at the time. They're also saying that it was incredibly well weather sealed. Uh, it actually held up in these extreme conditions when going at nine to, uh, minus 18 degrees Celsius. It kept going as long as they could. Now, the interesting thing is here that it's saying things like um, it actually had 205 phase detect AF points and it covered 90% of the frame. And in burst mode, it could shoot 15 frames per second. Impressively, in our testing, the AF system was able to keep up. Now, you think about what the competition had at this time three years ago, and you'll understand how good this actually was. Now, DP Review did this test where it kept up with the bike rider at 15 frames per second, and it kept that rider in focus. And like I said, at the time, this was not an easy thing to do. It also is interesting if you look at um, the goods that it delivered when it came to image quality. It says it was using a backside illuminated sensor way ahead of its time and it held its own against the best APS-C cameras of the day. Uh, it was an ISO invariant sensor and it said you could push the shadows actually to 5 EV which is very similar to what you're getting in today's Sony sensors now and the Nikon sensors. So in other words it's it's great for pushing shadows up and it said at no cost with noise uh, when shooting at the base, base ISO. So that's really interesting as well. Now, if we scroll down, it also said that it had great video features as well. Uh, it actually had things like um, zebras, it had focus peaking, um, it was over sample footage, which exceeded the quality of the, uh, the time the Panasonic GH4. And we all know how good Panasonic's cameras are for the GH4. Um, and they're saying really the only thing that held this back, and I can remember this at the time when I was even looking at this camera, was the advanced Kodak was H265. Now at the time the cameras couldn't actually uh, use that, it was too powerful. You needed a massive machine to be able to manipulate these uh, images uh, off this sensor. It also had um, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which was amazing as well. The back screen worked great, the autofocus worked great, and it's just interesting to see uh, what they had at that time and how good this camera was. And now I'm really interested to see what they bring to the sensor market, because clearly if they had this sensor back three years ago, I'm wondering what they're going to be able to produce uh, in the near future. And I'd love to know your thoughts about that. So please leave your thoughts down below what you think about this. Do you remember the NX1? Uh, did you have the NX1 and what did you think about it? I definitely think it was ahead of its time and it's a pity that it dis did disappear. So I'd love to know your thoughts uh, and I'll see you all again soon for the next video. Bye for now.